In a series of previous videos, we discussed AT2, a high-performance alternative to Bitcoin that essentially does not require energy waste. Importantly, AT2 is still highly secure. In fact, it is provably highly secure as proved by a group of researchers, many of which are at EPFL. Today, we will discuss a little bit of the huge mathematical proof of very high safety of AT2. The big issue at hand when you actually want to prove something about these kinds of systems is the arbitrary behavior of the adversary. Like Bitcoin, AT2 is designed to be launched on the internet and used by millions, if not billions, of unknown users. Yet, you cannot expect the entire internet to be made of nice people. In fact, you should expect that a non-negligible fraction of users will behave maliciously and actually try to disrupt AT2. Such evil users are called Byzantines, and any large-scale system like AT2 must be resilient to Byzantine attacks. And this makes the proof of safety hard. If you assume that some of the processes, some of the nodes, are malicious, and they might do anything, the definition of anything here is pretty general. What makes the case of AT2 even harder to handle mathematically is that there is a random component in its very design, as explained in a previous video. We work with systems, basically, that are simultaneously, we say, probabilistic, namely, even you know, correct processes, they, they rely on some form of randomness to take their choices, but they are also Byzantine, so that some of the processes will behave in a way that's arbitrary. And here it's important to underline that arbitrary is different from random. Pay attention, this is important. Arbitrary is, might be deliberately adjusted, a behavior that's deliberately adjusted to compromise the security of the system given the information that you have about the system. Random systems can be controlled using things like the law of large numbers, but Byzantine systems cannot. So basically what we're trying to do here is to compute probabilities over a distribution that has two components. One of the two components of the distribution is produced by the behavior of the correct processes, of the correct nodes of the computers that are honestly um, taking part in the system. And that's, uh, that's already random. And then we have another part of the distribution which we don't know. We don't know what the what the distribution is, because we don't know how the adversary, how the Byzantine opponent will behave. And one of the key breakthroughs here was to find ways to nevertheless tackle this difficult problem. So in order to tackle these problems, we had to develop a whole new system, a whole new set of you know, tools um, that, that basically, um, that basically you know, um, can be reduced to two main strategies. The first one is to explicitly prove what the best behavior is. Here we basically do the work of the Byzantine himself. We do our own security analysis in order to find the weakest point of the system. We prove that that's the weakest point of the system. And then we evaluate the probability of an adversary compromising the security of the system, given that that's the best strategy. What's the other trick? The other solution is to design the algorithm itself. And we did this in multiple points. Uh, to design the algorithm itself so that we can reliably be sure that no matter what operation the, um, the adversary performs on the system, it will have an effect that's just as good as random. And usually we achieve this um, by provably limiting the information that's available to the, to the adversary. We don't disclose some uh, for, some, for, for example, some of the randomness is hidden, it's only local, and it's never disclosed to other processes. And we can actually prove that one of the big differences between samples and quorums is that to some extent you pay much more for quorums. They are, they are brute force in their ability to provide security. In particular, by working out the proof of extremely high probability of safety, Matteo Monti and his collaborators identified a key necessary property of the sampling to guarantee Byzantine tolerance. A sample not only needs to be random, but oftentimes it also needs to be unknown to the adversary. You can actually prove in many parts of our system that if the adversary gets to know something about, you know, what sample did I pick, even if 
the adversary cannot affect my random number generation, if it, even if it's completely unbiased, the Byzantine adversary will still be able to compromise my view of the system. So that I guess that's the biggest difference, that previously we really tried to solve the general instance immediately, whereas now we have like a sequence of reduction. Given any instance, we want to say, okay, now we can assume without loss of generality that it has some extra structure. Then assume more structure and more structure until we can finally solve uh, this instance. In terms of energy efficiency, uh, so our algorithms, they are negligible in that regard. Uh, also, one other aspect that is important is that the solutions are uh, very simple. 